Well, good morning and welcome to the Court Street United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Jeremy Peters. Today I'm coming to you from the sanctuary in downtown Flint. I am glad, we are glad that you are here. However you're joining us this morning, we are so glad that you are pausing to worship with your Court Street Church family. We want you to know that God loves you and there is nothing that you, there is nothing that anyone in this world can do about it. God loves you as you are. God is with you wherever you are this morning. And we pray that as you worship wherever you are this morning, you would hear God's voice and experience God's love. Now today we're gonna to begin our worship by singing a little bit. We're going, to, we're going to sing a couple hymns today. If you've got a United Methodist hymnal at home and you'd like to turn to the pages and look at the music, the songs we're gonna be singing today are on pages number 211 and 213. That's 211 and 213. All right, church, take a deep breath, reach out in your heart to God, and let's approach God with a song.
Well, now we turn to an ancient poem, a poem that has given people comfort and encouragement and hope for thousands of years. The 23rd Psalm is filled with images of refuge and safety and peace. In the 23rd Psalm, we hear about the house of the Lord, a house with enough room and enough space for everyone you've ever loved, a house where the door is always open and no one ever has to leave. In that house, the poem tells us there's a table loaded with food, set for a feast, set for a banquet. On that table, there is a cup that's never empty, a cup that overflows. I invite you this morning to settle your soul at that table and find some rest in the house of the Lord as we say these words together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, now I want to say good morning to the kids who are gathered with us in worship today. Good morning, kids. We are glad that you are here worshiping with your church family, worshiping with all of these people who love you so much. I love you. Your church family loves you. God loves you. And Pastor Christy loves you too. Come on down close to the screen and let's have a time to have a conversation with Pastor Christy. Hi, friends. It's Pastor Christy. The book I have for us today is Love Letters from God, Bible Story for a Girl's Heart. It's by Glennis Nellist, and it's a Zonder Kids book. We're using it with permission. Our story today is The Young Girl. Let's read it together. In the stillness of a Bethlehem night, a lullaby rang out soft and clear under the starlit sky. In the darkness, a young girl was singing to her newborn baby. The girl was Mary, and her son was Jesus. In the stable, Joseph was sleeping. The donkey, the cows, and the sheep were all sleeping too. But Mary was wide awake, holding her tiny treasure in her arms and thinking about everything that had happened. She would never forget that night, just nine months ago, when an angel told her she had been chosen to be the mother of God's son. She remembered how afraid she was and how she didn't understand what it all meant. And now here she was, holding her little boy. Mary watched Jesus as he slept. He looked just like any other ordinary baby. Mary smiled at his chubby little fingers curled up around hers and his eyelashes as they softly closed against his cheeks. But in her heart, Mary knew that Jesus was not ordinary. How could he be when those shepherds had burst into the stable not long ago because angels from heaven had told them that a special baby had been born? And what did it mean when they knelt at her baby's feet? Even the sheep seemed to gaze at him and wonder, here's our savior, the shepherds had whispered in awe. But how could this tiny child be a savior? Mary wondered what would happen to her baby when he grew up. She had so many questions, and she was still afraid. But as she rocked her sleeping son in her arms, peace wrapped itself around her like a big warm blanket. And in the darkness, Mary knew that just like she was holding Jesus, God was holding her in God's huge, strong hands she was safe. Mary laid her baby in the manger, closed her eyes, and fell asleep. She was in God's hand, and nothing else mattered. Let's read our love letter together. Dear friend, 
Do you ever have questions that you can't find answers to? Mary had to go through so many questions, but as soon as she realized I was holding on to her, all of her fears went away. Did you know that I am holding on to you too? When you lie down to go to sleep, you are in my hands. When you wake up in the morning, you are in my hands. When you feel afraid, lonely, or sad, you are in my hands. And no matter what you do or how you feel, you will always be safe in my strong hands. Love, God. It's such a good reminder to remember that even people in the Bible, like Mary, had lots of questions about what was going on around her. And she was probably very scared, too. But it's good to remember that just as God was with her every step of the way, God is with us. So when we have questions that just don't seem to have answers, we can rest in knowing that no matter what happens, God is with us. We may not always get the answers to the questions we ask, but we can always know that God is there. Let's give thanks for God being with us. Can you pray with me? Just repeat what I say. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us every single day and holding us close in the times that we need it most. Help us to remember, I am important in this church. I am important in my family. And I am very, very loved. Amen. Well, friends, I hope that whatever you face in the coming days, you will remember that just like Mary, you may not get all the answers, but you can always know that God is with you. And in that, we find joy and we find hope and peace. I love you, friends. Take care. Well, we've reached that moment in our worship when we approach God in a time of prayer. And today, as we gather before God in prayer, I am praying for the family and friends of Betty Cross. Now, Betty Cross was the most senior member of our Court Street Church family. She passed away just this week. Now, last week, we talked about another very senior member of our church family. We talked about Arlene Crampton and how she had been confirmed as a member of the church back in the 1940s. Now, Betty had been a part of Court Street United Methodist Church for even longer than that. Betty was confirmed into membership of the church back in the 1930s. Betty lived to be 95 years old and every minute of all 95 of those years, Betty was a part of this Court Street Church family. Now this week I had a, a great treat. This week I got to spend some time with a scrapbook filled with pictures and stories from Betty's life. I wanna share some of those pictures with you today so you who didn't get to know Betty so well or didn't know her for so long, it can have a little bit of a glimpse into who, who Betty was for 95 years. So this first picture, this is the Betty that I knew. This is the Betty that many of us knew. This is the Betty we saw the last few years in the pews, especially around the holidays when her family would bring her in for worship. And Betty was already 90 years old when I first got to meet her. But of course, Betty wasn't always 90 years old. And so I wanna show you another picture. This picture is Betty standing at the front of the Court Street Sanctuary on her wedding day. And here's a picture of Betty when she was just 15 years old. Betty's the one standing in the middle with the great big smile. Here's a picture of Betty when she was 10 years old. And here's a picture of a very, very young Betty. Already in this picture, Betty is a beloved part of the Court Street Church family. And Betty spent 95 years as a part of Court Street Church. And she got to see her children and her grandchildren married at Court Street United Methodist Church. She got to see great-grandchildren baptized here at Court Street United Methodist Church. Betty's life wouldn't have been the same without Court Street. And Court Street wouldn't have been the same without Betty. Without Betty. We are so grateful for all of the things, all of the gifts that God gave us through Betty in her 95 years of being part of this church family. Today I'm praying that God will comfort and give peace to those people who love Betty and are missing her today. 
Well, maybe you've got a prayer of your own to lift up to God this morning. Maybe you've got some sadness to share with God. Maybe you've got a word of joy and thanksgiving to share with God. Whatever it is you're bringing with you to worship today, whatever you're feeling or experiencing this morning, go ahead and offer it to God. Go ahead and lay it at God's feet as Ryan Pratt leads us in a moment of prayer. Good morning, Court Street family. Bow your heads with me as we pray together. Dear God, we come before you asking for relief. Lord, recently during this pandemic season, we have begun to associate this time with loss, and many people have lost loved ones and continue to today. We pray, Lord, for peace and comfort in the midst of continuous grief we may be experiencing. Lord, as we get closer and closer to Christmas, continue to remind us what we're preparing for. While it's great to hear from loved ones and friends alike, help us to remember that your son arriving on earth is what we're here to truly celebrate. We continue to pray for healing for those afflicted, afflicted physically, mentally, and emotionally by COVID-19. We pray for frontline workers and those risking their health to help others. We pray for healthcare workers, emergency workers, store employees, and so many more who are truly helping those in need during these times. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the many blessings you give us, and thank you for safety and strength, and we pray that we would come see you one day in the place where all pain comes to an end in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, a lot of things have changed in 2020, but we believe the mission of the church remains the same. We believe that God has called us to create a world with more peace and more hope by loving one another as Jesus loves us. Now this last week, we got to share peace and hope and love with one another in the most beautiful way. Last Sunday after worship, we invited you all to come to 225 West Court Street to share in the first sacrament of Holy Communion that Court Street Church has celebrated in, in eight or nine months now. And what happened on Sunday afternoon as you all came and, and drove through the parking lot of the church was truly a beautiful thing. We believe that about 130 people shared in Holy Communion last Sunday. And it was so good to see you all parked in your cars and waving and having conversations through your car windows and being very conscientious and not getting out of your cars but only speaking with each other from a distance. Thank you for, for taking our safety precautions seriously. And as people pulled through the, the parking lot, we gave people Advent kits so you could celebrate the season of Advent and then Christmas at home as a, as a family. And if you still would like to have one of those kits if you weren't able to make it for communion last week, but you and your family would like to have one of those Advent and Christmas celebration kits, then please let us know, reach out to us, and we will find a way to get it to you. And of course, last Sunday, we asked you to bring in offerings, to bring in gifts of hats and mittens and gloves and teddy bears for our neighbors. And boy, did you ever respond. Now, we seriously underestimated the number of containers and tubs we were going to need to hold all of the gifts and offerings that you were going to bring in. By the time the morning was over, by the time our early afternoon gathering in the parking lot had ended, you had deposited an enormous pile of hats and mittens and stuffed animals. Animals, Thank you so much, Court Street United Methodist Church. It's the kind of outpouring of love and generosity that, that makes us proud to serve you, that makes us proud to be part of this church family. Thank you, Court Street United Methodist Church, for once again showing up, for demonstrating God's love in this community, and for being part of something powerful and important that God is doing right now in the city of Flint. Well, now we've got a special musical treat for you. Last Sunday, we shared with you a piece of music that had been put together by Russ McMartin and Alan Weimer. And this week, we've got another musical offering from the, the outstanding duo of, of Russ and Alan. So take a deep breath and let this lift your spirits a little bit as we prepare to hear God's word this morning. Take a deep breath, church, and enjoy this music from Alan Weimer and Russ McMartin.
Now we turn to this morning's scripture reading. Today we continue our sermon series for the season of Advent and Christmas. And we're calling this sermon series, The House of the Lord. And each week of this series, we're talking about the many places that God has called home. Now we're sharing this series with our friends at the Lake Fenton United Methodist Church, a place that I was once made to feel very much at home. And this morning's message, this morning's good news is going to be brought to us by Pastor Vince Slocum of the Lake Fenton United Methodist Church. Until very recently, until he became Pastor Vince, Vince Slocum called Court Street United Methodist Church home. And we are so excited to hear from Pastor Vince again this morning. But before we do that, before we hear from Pastor Vince, this morning's scripture reading is going to be brought to us by another pastor, another clergy colleague who once called Court Street United Methodist Church home. Now today's scripture reading is going to be shared with us by Reverend Elisa Williams. Now Elisa Williams right now serves the Mount Clemens First United Methodist Church, but back in 2007 she came and spent the time here at Court Street as, as a deacon serving the United Methodist Church among us in this church family. It's good to hear her voice again and I hope that you'll be glad, be glad to see her face as well. Open your heart, listen for God's voice as Reverend Elisa Williams shares with us this morning's scripture reading. Good morning, friends. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Hear these words. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Back in high school, I was part of a five-man a cappella group called Bass Clef. Now keep in mind, this was back in the late 90s, the early 2000s, back when groups like the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and, and 98 Degrees were, were considered to be popular. Now, I, I need to point all these things out to you to, to help prepare you for what's about to come next. You see, that's me. <laughs> that gangly, anemic-looking train wreck holding up the wall in his Sunday best tank top there is, is me. Which means that that pose, that outfit, and that picture were all choices that I made in my senior year of high school. And it, and it actually bears just a little bit more consideration. You see, I showed up that morning wearing tearaways and a t-shirt, which means that at some point in the proceedings, I looked at myself in the mirror and said, you know what this picture really needs, what's really gonna put this over the top is, is just a little bit more pasty white skin. <laughs> now, one of the things that, that we used to do in, in my time with Bass Clef was that each of the guys in the group gave themselves a different boy band persona that we would introduce ourselves with, right? So we had, we had a bad boy of the group, we had a baby of the group, we had a nice guy of the group, and a goofball of, of the group, and, and then of course, then of course there was me. 
And so before every concert, we would introduce ourselves and each guy in the group would step forward and introduce themselves and share what their boy band persona was. Now, I was always the last one to introduce myself. And every single time it would come to me and I would pause and I would scan the room a little bit, start doing one of these with my head as I, as I looked around before stepping forward and saying, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, I give to you the eighth wonder of human Kind, a man so dashing, so debonair, so handsome and charming, he makes Casanova look like Quasimodo. A man so devastatingly handsome that he makes Frank Sinatra look like William Hung. Husbands, hold on to your wives. Fathers, hang on to your daughters. I am Vincent Slocum, and I am the good-looking one of the group. <laughs> and at this point, I would have made laser-focused eye contact with a young lady in the front row before firing off one final. How you doing? I did that every single time that I introduced myself, right? That became a routine. I became known for that introduction. I even actually developed a reputation for myself as a kind of hyper-confident ladies' man, and people ate it up, <laughs> right? As you can imagine, I, as a teenage boy, loved every minute. Of their, of their attention, right? I had swagger for days and I could not get enough of it. <laughs> now this morning we, we continue our survey of the many places that God has called home with a reading from the book of Jeremiah. You see, after decades of wandering in the wilderness, the Israelites finally found their way into the promised land. But even after centuries of struggle and, and challenge, the Israelites looked around and still couldn't help but feel like the little kid on the playground, surrounded as they were by all of these great and mighty empires, kingdoms like Babylon and Assyria, the Hittites and, and the Egyptians. They, they couldn't help but feel like, like the little kid on, on the playground. And and so the Israelites came to God and said, you know, God, that's when, when all these other nations go to worship their gods, right? They're, they're doing it in, in great monuments. They're going into huge temples and towering ziggurats to, to worship their gods. And, and yet we've still got you here in this, in this rinky-dink tent, you know, this, this stank, musty old tabernacle. You know, people, God, people are starting to, to stop and stare. People are starting to look and, and laugh. You know, you should, you should really let us build you a proper house, right? No one's ever going to take us seriously. No one's ever going to take you seriously unless you let us build you a house that, that matches your glory and, and majesty, and at first, God was resistant to the idea, but, but eventually, after years and years of nagging, he finally gave in and said, you know what, if you have to, if you absolutely have to build me this house, then, then go ahead, fine. And so the Israelites built a majestic temple as, as the house to God right in the center of the holy city of Jerusalem and they shipped in all of these materials rare and wealthy materials from from all of these other nations and 
And once it was completed, they couldn't get enough of it. And, and really, that's when the Israelites started to strut. Right? And they started doing one of these with their heads as they looked around and, and said, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, Gaze in wonder at the great and mighty people of the nations of Judah and Israel, next door neighbors to God. They said, look at the majesty, the wonder and awesomeness of this great house that we have built to house the great and living God almighty. They said, nations of the world, you can huff and you can puff, but you are not going to blow this house down. You may be big and bad, but our God will never let you destroy this great house that we have built for him. And so for hundreds of years, the Israelites strutted around like that until finally the unthinkable happened. An army from Babylon came marching over the horizon and proceeded to trample the holy city of Jerusalem, burned the temple to the ground, and marched the people of Judah away in chains to live in exile in Babylon. And of course, God had been warning them for years that this was coming through the words of his prophets. He had been warning the Israelites, stop strutting around, crowing about the greatness of this house that you have built for me. As though that somehow makes you invincible. As though I am somehow obligated to save you when things go badly. Just because you have built me this house. He says, let me be clear. My glory is so magnificent that you could not ever possibly build anything to match it. What could you build me that is greater than all of creation? He said, this great house that you have built has absolutely nothing to do with my glory or the strength of our relationship and everything to do with your own fragile egos. And I promise you that it will all come crashing down around you if you don't stop. He said, if our relationship requires that we have this temple to prove it, then our relationship really was not built on all that much to begin with. Then eventually it will all end. And so in today's reading, the Israelites find themselves in exile in Babylon. And in this morning's reading, God sends them a message of hope. He says, you know, I know that you're hurting. Right now, I know that right now you feel about as broken and as beat down as you can possibly be. But I promise you that this will all pass. This is all going to end. He says that a day is coming in which I will set all things to right. A day is coming in which I will write my law and my love on each and every single human heart. And you will never feel the need to go looking for me ever again. Because he says that in that day, my glory will no longer resound in clouds of fire and in thrones of sapphire. 
My glory will no longer dwell in dusty tabernacles or walls of stone. Instead, every single human soul will magnify my glory and sing it out to the world. And we will never be separated from one another ever again. Now, it shouldn't come as, as any surprise to, to you, although it certainly did come as a surprise to me, that, that after I graduated from, from high school, I, I fell into a bit of a slump. It turns out that when most of your confidence is, is built around people cheering and, and applauding and and clapping every time you, you get up on the stage, then, then your confidence really isn't built on all that much to begin with, right? And, and I fell into, into kind of a personal darkness. And, and I started to look at myself and think, oh my gosh, you know, did I peak in high school, right? Is it all downhill from here? It was a difficult time for me. But it was an important time, right? It was a time that taught me the difference between blind egotism and humble confidence. You see, blind egotism says that I'm great. I'm doing great. And I know that I'm doing great because everyone else keeps telling me. That, that I'm doing great, as opposed to humble confidence, which says, you know, I did the best that I could, and some things I did really well, and, and some things I did a little poorly, and, and maybe could do a little better at in the future, but, but I tried as hard as I could, and, and, that's, and that's okay. Now, I can tell you, I am absolutely fantastic Blind egotism. I am great at it. And, and I am getting better with each passing day at humble confidence. In fact, it's a lesson that 2020 continues to teach me even to this day. You see, I thought that my faith was absolutely unshakable until the coronavirus pandemic drove us away from our sanctuaries and in-person worship services. And I came to find as the weeks passed, the cup of my spirit became harder and harder to fill with each passing week. I even found that some weeks I had trouble even filling it at all. I thought that I was absolutely up to being a pastor and stepping into the pulpit. I thought that that was going to be a breeze until I spent 20 successive Sundays preaching sermons and offering liturgy to great empty rooms, staring at the dim glow of my own face on my tablet screen. 2020 has been hard, and 2020 has demanded every single lesson of humble confidence that I have ever learned in my life. But this morning, I have hope. This morning, I have hope in remembering that even in the most difficult weeks, even in those weeks in which my cup is at its hardest to fill and it does not get filled at all, those weeks in which I feel at my absolute lowest, my most beaten and broken down, I have hope in knowing that the God of infinite glory and the God of infinite majesty and wonder would choose to take a form as lowly and humble as my own human form, come down to earth and endure the unimaginable pain of death on the cross, all in an effort to make a heart as broken 
as vulnerable and as fragile as my own, his home. In order that we should never be apart. And and that's not too bad. Will you play with me this morning? Gracious and loving God, we thank you that your love resounds so powerfully, that you, that your confidence in glory is so great that you would choose to make a lonely heart such as our own, your home, that you would choose to walk with us on this, our vulnerable and broken walk to stay with us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, to never abandon us, even in those times in which we fail to see you. But we ask this morning that you make that a closer walk. Continue to fill our hearts and strengthen us in the days to come so that we may always come to see the ways that you are with us and within us. Amen. Well, in just a moment, I'm going to give a word of blessing. Before the benediction, though, I want to give you a, a heads up about what's going to happen in worship next Sunday morning. Next Sunday, in the fourth Sunday of the season of Advent, we're going to keep alive what is for many people one of their favorite Court Street United Methodist Church family traditions. Next Sunday morning, we're going to have our annual service of lessons and carols. Now the service of lessons and carols is a Sunday that we set aside each year during the season of Advent when we take the time to tell the story as we find it in the pages of scripture and in the songs of the season. It's a Sunday that focuses very much on scripture readings and on music. There will be lots and lots of music. Our musicians have been working hard to make sure that we have something, something beautiful, something uplifting, something that will connect our souls with God during this holiday season. And so you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't miss worship next Sunday. Next Sunday, please, uh, please invite your friends as well. If you know people who love the music of the season, if you know people who love music at all, or people who are longing to hear the voice of God, who are looking for a message, a sign that God is still with them and hasn't given up on them, then please, please invite your friends to tune in next Sunday morning for our service of Lessons and Carols. Also this morning, we wanna leave you with a conversation starter. And we hope that you'll discuss this conversation starter with maybe with people who you live with, 
or maybe you'll pick up the phone and call a church friend or just a, a coffee buddy and talk about, uh, talk about this question. The question we wanna ask this week is, is this. So in this morning's scripture reading, the prophet Jeremiah tells us about God's desire to write the law upon our hearts and to place the law in our minds. And so the question we'd love for you to discuss this week is this. If you could write one law on the hearts and place it in the minds of all of the people in the world, what would that law be? Again, if you could write one law upon the hearts of every human being, what law would you write? All right, church, I hope you have a good time discussing that with, with your, your loved ones, with people who are close to you and people on the phone this afternoon and throughout the week. And now I invite you to receive this word of blessing. Whether you've been looking for God in the right places or all the wrong places, may God find you. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace. You are deeply loved.